So let's start. So good morning, everybody. We build planes. We build big planes. So before starting, just a couple of words on me. My name is Laurent Perez, and I'm working as an infrastructure project manager in Airbus since uh, 10 years now. Um, I live in south of France, in the city of Toulouse. Really nice city, really good food, really beautiful. And this is my first presentation here in San Francisco. Well, second one. I did one yesterday for the Japanese uh, committee. Uh, but I already did one in Paris uh, end of uh, last year. And I uh, also went to the Ansible uh, Fest uh, in London in last June. I like traveling. I like traveling a lot. So I've been to, to Asia several times, traveled around Europe several times. I've been also in North America already in Florida a couple of years ago. Uh, and I would like so much to go a bit more in South America. So next uh, travel, I guess, will be South America or Japan. I'm really an aeronautical and space enthusiast. I love space. I love planes. And uh, if I can, I would like to, to go and work maybe on the space exploration on a satellite part of my company, if possible. So just before starting, a couple of words of, on Airbus, the company itself. This is a big company. And Airbus Commercial Aircraft, the branch uh, for which I'm working, uh, is just one branch of the company. So the global company is around one, uh, 150,000 employees, uh, split in three main branches, uh, one being the helicopter part. So this is an helicopter manufacturer providing helicopters for civil and military uh, purposes. Uh, second branch is the military one, so defense and space providing um, providing, sorry, uh, hardware like uh, Eurofighters, like missiles, like satellites and launchers, and also encrypted uh, communication system. And the third branch is Airbus Commercial Aircraft, so the biggest one. Uh, the company is around uh, 55,000 employees, around $61 billion revenue each year, and operating with uh, 400, uh, yeah, 400 operators around the world, with around 10 years backlog in production. You may know our products, I'm not sure, a lot of us have already bought some, but uh, we provide a couple of nice airplanes. From the medium range airplane to the very long range airplane and very big airplanes. So basically we have already sold uh, 18,000 airplanes uh, and delivered 11,000 of them, which means we have still remaining 700 airplanes to be uh, manufactured. So around 10 years backlog again. Um, 25,000 airplanes per day flying, which means around uh, an, an airplane, sorry, taking off or landing every 1.4 seconds around the world. So Airbus is really a global player uh, in the airplane industry today, with a lot of sites uh, split in around the world, uh, with manufacturing sites located mainly in Europe, but also in Asia with uh, some factories in Beijing and in the US with a factory in Mobile in Alabama. We also have some customer support and some training support around the world and some warehouse for spare, spare, sorry, uh, spare pieces around the world in order to, to cope and to, to be really close to our customers. 5,000 uh, professionals are located near our customers in 50 countries around the world to provide the best support as we can to the companies. So just to, be, just to focus now on the IT part of Airbus, uh, we are around 1,500 people split around the world again with um, the main activity located in Europe. So basically Germany, England, Spain, and France, but also uh, in Asia again, in China and the US. To be noted, uh, Airbus is also working a lot in the Silicon Valley uh, where we bought uh, a company named A3 which is really dedicated to innovation. Amongst all the professional in Airbus, you can find all the profiles that are required in uh, a really changing world in information system. You can find architects, you can find also DevOps uh, managers, DevOps um, experts, cloud experts also, uh, really technical experts on all the fields and all the technology we, we have, we have um, sorry, uh, installed inside Airbus. 
So a couple of figures, just to give you the size of the company and the challenges we are facing today, and the constraints we have to cope with. So basically, Airbus Commercial Aircraft, uh, as I said, is uh, 55,000 employees, but including all the um, partial times, all the trainees and so on, we count uh, 56,000 users, so almost 100,000. But on top of that, you have to add all the users coming from the different division of the company. So helicopters and defense space, so ad an additional 100,000. But we have also to manage our suppliers and our customers for a total of maybe a bit less at 400,000 uh, people to manage. We also have a lot of um, constraints in terms of uh, hardware with the management of um, laptops, PCs, of mobile phone and fixed phone also. Uh, but also in terms of uh, access network, uh, we can count around 10,000 access points uh, in terms of network, routing, for instance, and switching devices. Uh, the global company is around 27,000 servers, so a lot of servers to manage also. And of course, some uh, really nice uh, capacities in terms of uh, calculation and high performance computing. So now to be a bit more focused on the work we are performing in Airbus. Uh, the company is a big company and um, quite an heavy company in terms of methodology and deployment. So since years, we have been working with a lot of change management, uh, which was really long, quite expensive in fact, with a lot of human mistakes. And each project could be really, really long to perform. So basically, we are right now in a really big transition and reorganization within Airbus. So, this transition really aims to deploy the latest technology to bring the best, the best added value to our customers, internal and external ones. So of course, we are deploying, I think like a lot of other companies, uh, the latest technology in terms of big data, public cloud, uh, internet of things, API management, and so on. So again, the main message here is that we really want to deploy at huge scale the latest technologies we really want the user, the end user, to be the center of everything we are doing. And we want that to be on self-service. This is really the core and uh, the main objective of the company today. We are transforming to give the end user all the power he needs to do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. So this is a really small and um, high level roadmap, but on this you can see that Airbus is really betting a lot on the open source solution since quite a few years now. Of course, before 2008, we already had a lot of uh, open source solutions, but the movement and the will to, to use open, open, so open source software solutions, sorry, uh, really started in 2008 with really a turning point, a really important one in 2014, where we decided to adopt uh, Linux as a preferred operating system. And when I say Linux, I mean Red Hat servers, of course. Uh, today, we are operating uh, Red Hat 5, 6, and 7 servers, of course, and a lot of Windows servers, too. Um, but I really want to highlight the fact that, on this slide, we really want to move forward and adopt as many open source solutions as we can. Of course, we have been working with OpenStack since a couple of years now. Uh, we have deployed OpenShift also uh, two years ago. And today, uh, which is the main focus of this uh, presentation, is the deployment with Ansible Tower. So, to give you a bit of context, to understand a bit the challenges we are facing and uh, the scope of our work today in, inside Airbus, we want to deploy applications, and when I say application, I mean front-end application, middleware application, but also databases, uh, and we want to automatize everything. Oh, when I say everything, the most as we can, of course. This is the main context. Of course, with the usage of Ansible Tower, we discovered some additional features and possibilities, allowing us to perform some configuration, large-scale configuration, of course, some checks on the configurations, and some remediation when we need it. On top of that, we need to add some drivers, quite important ones, since uh, I guess we possess almost all the technologies on the market today, uh, which is quite uh, a constraint and a driver for us. Some of our businesses need to have really frequent application uh, needs in terms of deployment, 
Uh, and other businesses have really critical applications also to deploy. For instance, uh, some applications managing the, the flights and the plane when they are in flight are extremely sensitive and needs to be really, really um, strong, I would say. So we have really some nice uh, drivers to cope with in order to deploy and in order to, to make our businesses happy. So on top of that, we have decided during this transformation to deploy a full DevOps chain. So you can see there all the components we are deploying today inside this DevOps chain. And uh, today we will get the focus on Ansible Tour, of course. And I will give a word also on the second solution we have, which is Atomic Solution. So basically, we started with a proof of concept. And with the help of the Gartner, we identified eight, uh, eight tools on the market. And when I say tool, I mean orchestrator on one side. And of course, the challenger was on Civil Tower. Uh, we removed two of them because they were not mature enough. And they were not able to cope with our ecosystem and to be integrated with our ecosystem. So at the end, only six uh, tools were remaining. So we formed uh, a team of nine people belonging to different businesses, to different uh, branch of Airbus, uh, in order to create a criteria matrix and in order to test all these solutions. So basically, we have taken also five projects already existing inside Airbus, and we have re-scripted and redeployed all of them using all these solutions. So at the end of this POC, which lasted for like uh, six months, that was an extensive POC, uh, we filled the criteria matrix, and that was a surprise, and Sybil Tower was the first one. It was a challenger, but it was the first one. Why? Because Ansible Tower is simple to use. It's an efficient tool, quite cost efficient, um, but also it's quite an agnostic uh, tool, which means we do not uh, depend on a supplier, and uh, or, I mean, yes, we depend on supplier, but this is an open source tool. So really easy to integrate in our ecosystem. On top of that, and one of the main uh, advantage of Ansible Tour, it's absolutely agentless, which is really appreciated by the security teams. And we bought also, uh, after Ansible Tower, the orchestrator, so we'll just come back on the previous slide. So Atomic, which is an orchestrator, uh, a tool named ERA, A-R-I, uh, which stands for uh, Applicative um, Release Automation. Uh, the company has been bought a couple of months ago by uh, Computer Associate, for information. Um, so, to come back on Ansible Tower, uh, main scope was the application deployment, and again, main scope was to deploy third-party tools or uh, develop tools, tools sorry, on premises. Uh, we managed also to deploy the middleware with that, which means databases, front-end servers, and so on. We have been able also to deploy and to, to patch our system, our application in the first step, but we're also working today to, to patch our Linux system and our Windows system using just one tool, Ansible Tower. We have been able, thanks to our businesses and thanks to the work we are performing with them, uh, to do some configuration, uh, remote configuration large scale, of course, uh, to make some check on the configuration and some remediation on this configuration. And now we are also working to perform some maintenance activity uh, thanks to Ansible Tower. The tool is good, the tool is really efficient, uh, but the tool without any integration with, within our own ecosystem will not bring us enough ad added value. We need to integrate it inside Airbus, we need to integrate it within our current architecture and with it, uh, within the tools we are using today. So basically, one of the first steps was to expose, was to provide access uh, to our suppliers and internal colleagues, of course, to Ansible Tower. So basically, we worked a lot also with our network colleagues in order to provide all the configuration and all the accesses from uh, our suppliers to our own uh, infrastructure. One really important point also, we have been working to deliver some collaborative platform in order for people uh, to work together and, of course, to reuse as much as they can all the playbooks and all the roles that have been developed and scripted. This is really, a really important uh, part of the task, the collaborative part. People have to work together. People have to share what they are doing. Recoding, rescripting is not efficient enough. We need to reuse what has been done. Of course, this is, I will not say this is a new solution, but uh, 
for us, this is a new solution. So our customers, internal customers, are not especially um, trained in this kind of uh, technology. So we have been able to build up a center of expertise uh, with uh, including me, I'm not an expert, but with including me, uh, 4.5 FT, so full-time equivalent uh, people in the team. So this is quite a small expertise team, really efficient team, uh, that can bring added value to our businesses, support them, and script for them if they need so. Uh, a good approach also for our businesses is to have a clear view on the prices and on the cost of the deployments they will need for their applications. So basically, we also worked on a pricing model and catalog, which is now absolutely available for our businesses. Important point also is to listen a lot uh, to their feedback on the prices and on the service itself in order to update it and to modify it if needed. If you want uh, this kind of service to work, you need to be really close to your customer to listen to their need and to listen to their feedback, which is really important. One point on which we are a bit struggling today is the training capabilities. Uh, this is quite difficult to, to have some, uh, some training session uh, on the right price and the right uh, level of expertise for, for the customers. So this is something we are working on, but this is something I want to provide to my customers. Uh, so as you can see, we have built quite uh, a really strong and resilient um, infrastructure for our uh, Ansible Tower. So we can basically manage on the paper uh, 20,000 nodes uh, with only three clusters. And when I say three clusters, I mean uh, 20,000 nodes per cluster. We have an integration, a validation, and a production cluster. And the SLA, SLA is really interesting too. So basically, we have built up this infrastructure to have a 99 or 7% SLA. At the end, uh, so until today, uh, the SLA observed is really close to 100%. Uh, I did not take into account the fact that we will have to update and upgrade the platform uh, in the coming months, which will uh, be lower the SLA. But anyway, this is a really good SLA. The platform is really, really stable. Just a word on uh, the orchestrator, Atomic. Again, the tool has been bought by uh, CA a couple of months ago. So basically, we want to provide to our customers all the tools belonging to the DevOps tool chain, so they can use it as they want, uh, on self-service, of course. But we want also to provide to certain kind of customers a really high-level tool which allows us to control a bit more and to have a better visibility on specific projects. And when I say specific project, I do mean project that needs uh, a really strong control over the deployments, a project that needs a lot of components a lot, of, a lot of servers and uh, where people spend a lot of time to deploy. For instance, I can take the case of the deployment of the, um, for the engineering inside Airbus of the, the 3D suit, uh, Katia for instance, which requires a lot of components to be deployed. So basically the people in charge of the deployment now can access uh, a really, really interesting workflow manager allowing them to deploy exactly what they want and how they want to deploy it. So this is really an interesting tool for complex projects and uh, complex infrastructure and uh, applicative deployments. Again, the aim of this tool is also to be integrated, or this is the opposite. Uh, we need to integrate all the DevOps tools, like uh, GFrog, for instance, GitHub, or uh, Ansible Tower, within Atomic. So thanks to the APIs and the already available plugin, we are absolutely able to drive and to reuse all our tools with Atomic. And on top of that, which is quite interesting too, if we want to add another tool, for instance, a Puppet or for any other tool, we can completely add it and integrate it within Atomic. So basically, we give, um, we give to our customer a control panel over all the tools belonging to the DevOps tool chain. So this slide may be interesting for you too. Uh, I wanted to use and to, dis to display there a project and uh, to show you a bit uh, the added value of uh, the work we are doing today. So as I said, Airbus is a quite uh, big company. The processes are a bit heavy. Uh, so basically for a standard project, and I took this one, Flight Conversion Service Project, which is the conversion of uh, any file into signed PDF files. Uh, basically, this kind of project took between one year and one year and a half in Airbus. Uh, to deploy. So we had to launch change request, over change request, over change request for every small deployment or so every small configuration we had to do with, uh, I guess it is the same everywhere, but with a lead time 
uh, quite important between five to 10 days for each, each, de each demand. Uh, so basically, if you have a really complex project to handle, uh, you can spend really easily one to one and a half year doing your project. So basically, what we did for this project, I discussed a lot with the project manager, and I said, okay, let's go. I give you one resource, one FT, for two weeks, and let's deploy what you need. So basically, the guy worked for two weeks, um, split it over two months, so that was efficiently two weeks. And basically, instead of deploying and making 10 loops of deployments, uh, they have been able in three months to perform 37 deployments. So basically, each deployment bringing any additional features, any additional capacities. And at the end, uh, instead of one year, one year and a half project, we had a three months project. So you can easily understand the reduction of costs for any project, the reduction of resources, and the flexibility and autonomy for the businesses that really are able now to deploy whenever they want and whatever they want. This is extremely simple for them and uh, really flexible. This is the main message here. A second use case is the Splunk deployment. So we are using Splunk as the standard monitoring tool today. Uh, and we have been working with the Splunk team uh, and, uh, and the tool on Sybil Tower providing them all the access they needed. So basically, they needed to deploy uh, in different environments, so integration validation production, which is for us on the legacy LAN. Uh, but they also needed to deploy the tool on DMZ and uh, on Amazon Web Services. The global scope of the project was to deploy uh, 90 core servers, just for core servers, not agent. That will be on a second release. Uh, and they managed to do everything within only, I would say, 20 roles. They extensively used uh, the surveys in order to manage all the specific variables and to configure as they wished um, the tool and the configuration. But I s f for uh, my, per my perspective, sorry, uh, the main point using Ansible Tower was the extensive and massive usage of the workflow manager. So you can see below the workflows they have created to deploy all the components of Splunk within Airbus and on AWS. Again, this is extremely appreciated by your customers. They really want to have a clear picture, a graphical picture of what they are doing. On top of that, this kind of uh, workflow manager allows you not to create big scripts, hardly maintainable, but just several really small scripts, really easy, really clear to read. So in, just in terms of maintenance of the script, this is extremely useful for everybody. Again, main advantages of uh, using Ansible Tower in this kind of deployment is the reduced number of people needed in the team and the reduced lead time necessary to deploy whatever you need. Thank you, Laurent. So I'm, I'm Yassine, I'm a Red Hat employee. I'm what we name an account solution architect, which means I'm helping these guys on their digital journey. Um, I'm also based in France, uh, but not in Toulouse, in Paris. And uh, we really like our food, wine and cheese. And if you would like to test this type of cheese, which is not a law on the US territory, you need to visit France. <laughs> but uh, my main focus today is going to be on network automation. Uh, and uh, that's, that's really an Airbus session. So I just want to, to have two slides and deal with, with what we are doing with these guys, especially on network automation. As you may have noticed for Ansible, that's a pretty strong topic. A lot of uh, new features are coming, uh, and we are really, really working with third-party uh, vendors on this topic. And I've been really, really surprised uh, when I discovered with uh, Laurent a team within Airbus, the network guys, who are using Ansible for four years. It was quite a shock for me, to be honest, because usually in big company like that, storage, uh, folks and network guys are more or less usually using the vendor tools and pretty, pretty more linked with uh, the legacy application and tooling and so on. But these guys have decided for quite a while to use Ansible and to do network automation from end to end. And the good point is that now uh, they are planning to, to be a, a pretty strong contributor on, uh, on Ansible. And they have started to deploy and create their own module. As you may have noticed, the company is big. They have a huge pan-European network, so it's very complex. Uh, there's different entities within, uh, 
within Airbus, there's the civil part, but there's also some military and defense and space activities, and there's a lot, a lot of uh, network segregation, and that's uh, quite a challenge. Uh, these guys are using Ansible in order to propagate all the change configuration within all the network all over Europe, which means if they would like to deploy a new VRF, a new VLAN, uh, a new way to access a specific area, a DMZ or whatever, it's fully automated. And the team is pretty, quite small. I mean, uh, today it's four people who are doing this job. So it's, it's quite amazing, to be honest. So now, uh, what they are doing is mainly, and that's what they are started with, to use Ansible manually in order to collect a lot of metrics, information on a huge amount of switches. We are dealing with uh, 10,000 switches. Uh, and, and their big challenge was the, the fact that some of their switches were pretty old. L very old iOS version, very heterogeneous uh, network equipments. So that's why they are started to deploy their own module. Re they, 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 they have um, made a contribution in Python. And now they are moving forward to what we name the iOS unders underscore config module, which is, let's say, the official network module. And we are helpi helping those guys to, to move forward on the contribution as well. And of course, uh, the goal is to, to expand that. Uh, so they, they have a lot of network equipment. They are using uh, F5 load balancers, uh, info blocks for DNS and so on, IPAM appliances for multiple vendors. And what, why they have selected uh, Ansible is mainly because we already provide a huge amount of modules so then they can set it up and, and not reinvent the wheel all the time, which was, let's say, the type of usual issues we can say mistakes from all those big companies which are working in silos. It's absolutely not the case with uh, we Ansible today, and that's, that's really interesting. The second point is uh, regarding Amazon, because these guys have decided to, to move a lot of um, workload on Amazon for the civil side. It's a project that its name uh, Move to Cloud. And their biggest challenge was how, do, how are we going to manage and create uh, Amazon VPC and how we're going to connect that through VPN and give access to all those segregated areas in a fully automated way. So they worked for six months on this project and they have been able to integrate that within their, their continuous integration chain and pipeline. So now the customer would like to have a VPC and create a new project on Amazon. They are going uh, through an, an ET ITSM self portal, which just fills a few, a few a form, and then it's fully automated from end to end. VPC creation, uh, dynamic VPN to the, the, the area they need to access internally, and they don't have any manual tasks for this purpose. And the good point is that we have also decided to create specific roles and have members within the team who are responsible for those roles. And as Laurent said, they would like to share the knowledge, not reinvent the wheel. And the people who push a role are responsible for, for maintaining the role from end to end. So it's very, very efficient in order to speed up their automation process. So thank you. Um, just a small slide on the next step to move forward. So basically, we have start, as I said, we have started the proof of concept end of 2016, which lasted for six months. Um, some decisions, time to decide, time to purchase the tools. We have deployed everything uh, April last year. That we have been working on Ansible tour really efficiently since one year now. Uh, we have deployed today 2,000 hosts with a ramp up estimated to 10,000 hosts uh, by the end of next year. We still have a lot of work to do really a lot of work to do because we still need to integrate uh, Ansible Tower just for the network with all the equipments we have and all the technologies we have. We need to also work on Windows and Linux deployment management in terms of patches and upgrade. We need also to work to integrate Ansible Tower with the atomic orchestrator, which is partially working for the moment. We need to integrate it with the develop, DevOps pipeline, of course, but the main task and the most important one will be to integrate it with the new ITSM tool we are deploying today. Um, I will not speak more about this one, but this will be the main feature and the main uh, task in the, the coming months in order to have end-to-end uh, -end 
I would say, uh, end user to, to delivery uh, process as automated as we can. So this is the global picture of the end-to-end -end, uh, as, as we would like it to be, uh, meaning that the end user, the customer, will have just one portal, the ITSM portal, with one catalog, which will ag aggregate, of course, a lot of catalogs. Uh, but the scope and the goal is really to have the end user guy just requesting something and with an automated workflow then to have everything delivered automatically with all the CMDB and the hosting components also updated with all the information needed. Of course, we still want to stick with the ITL best practices, which is quite important for us it's, since we are still using it and since uh, a lot of our processes are using it today. Main point on this slide, and globally on the presentation, the end user, the consumer, is really the center of all the attention. He, has, he is the one to consume, is the one uh, that should be able to consume on his own. So self-service and user-centric. So of course, Sensible Tour is a good tool, but we still have some risk and some difficulties. So basically, when you have Ansible to when you want to, def to, to do some application middleware deployment of network configuration, you have to, to develop. You have to spend a bit time, so money, to develop, which means you have to find the right skills to do it. Of course, using Ansible to is good, but in the company, which is a big company, we have also different people using different tools. So we need to have a clear governance and a clear path uh, in terms of tooling uh, and uh, the usage of this tooling. So this is something really important to have a clear path and a strong governance uh, around the tools. Difficult point in multiple technologies. So as you can understand, we have almost everything. So basically, we cannot cope with all the technologies today. We have to select the ones where we can bring the most and uh, highest added value to our customers the fastest. So we cannot cover everything. And of course, we need to be really proactive in terms of communication within the company. We need to sell the tool, we need to sell the DevOps tool chain, we need to sell it to our customers. This is really important, so the people in charge really have this um, duty um, of going to the customers and uh, more or less marketing and selling the product. And of course, yeah, as I said, find the right resources. But of course, with, with the risk, we have also opportunities. And opportunities, one of, the one, yes, one of the most important ones for me, the alignment with the market best practices. Today, we like, or until today, we liked to buy applications and customize them. Today, this is not what we want to do anymore. We really want to stick to the market. We want to stick to the versions of the tools on the market. We don't want to spend time and money to customize each time there is an upgrade. Um, there is also a good opportunity to federate all the existing automation um, initiatives. As I said, a lot of people are using different tools. So the goal is to really discuss with them, with them and convince them that the tool we are using today is the right one for them. This is a long task, quite difficult task, but it is really important to have some uh, kind of um, cohesion within the, within the DevOps pipeline and within the tool we are using. One really interesting opportunity is, of course, is the mass reuse. But another one which is extremely important is the new way of working because, again, people are used to work in a certain way, all the way, I would say sometimes. So we need, clearly need, to work on the mindset of the people. We need to, to make them understand that the processes will change and they will need to change with the processes. And again, the center of competence for me, which is a huge opportunity to show that we can do things and we can really bring added value to the customers. And we have the earnings. So as you have maybe already understood, uh, we have been able to reduce the lead time for deployments really uh, on a really interesting way, which means cost saving, of course. On top of that, you can uh, ensure additional consistency on your deployments, meaning less human mistakes. So again, uh, you will save money and you will save time. And of course, what, the last point for me, which is the most, most important one, is really the teamwork and the collaboration within, with the tools. It's really important to have all the people working together, sharing what they have already done, 
and helping each other in reaching the same goal at the end. So this is really important to reuse and to work together. This is really for me the main, uh, main message here. So, first slide on the, the kind of uh, profiles we can find in Airbus. And we are still searching for some, so. <laughs> Small message. Uh, in any case, that's it for me. So thank you for your attention. And uh, if you have any question, please do not hesitate.